Greg, throughout 2013, USAID led an effort within the Global Donor Working Group on Land, aiming to improve donor coordination and support to the voluntary guidelines of FAO. You were also instrumental with the developing of the so-called donor database and map. And I have it here. Um, it's going to come out and introduced very soon to the public at the platform's annual General Assembly later this month in Paris. Greg, can you tell us a bit more about what this map is all about and which kind of information will be accessible? What's the scope of this mapping exercise? Thank you very much. We recognize that to achieve greater coordination, we must first have a clear understanding of who is doing what and where in this sector. To that end, USAID has been leading the effort to develop a comprehensive database of all land governance programs funded by members of the Global Donor Working Group on Land. So far, we have collected information on approximately 600 programs in over 92 countries with a total value of about $2 billion. The database contains information on the location, duration, funding, and scope of each program, as well as information on what specific aspects of the voluntary guidelines are being supported by each program. The database also allows donors to include links to supplemental resources, such as reports of program websites and points of interest for each program. We also developed an interactive mapping tool that clearly displays where different donors and development agencies are working and what they are working on with respect to land and resource governance. This information can help us and other stakeholders better coordinate these programs and identify opportunities to leverage resources for greater impact in our efforts to improve food security and nutrition reduce land-related conflict, and produce and promote economic growth for women and men. Greg, which donors have already fed their information into the database? Can other donors still join the effort, the initiative? In addition to USAID and the Millennium Challenge Corporation from the United States, donor agencies from Austria, Belgium, Denmark, France, Germany, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Sweden, the United Kingdom, as well as the European Union, the World Bank, have all contributed program information to the database. The Canadian and Japanese development agencies have also recently joined this initiative and are in the process of adding their program information to the database. The initiative is being conducted through the Global Donor Working Group on Land with the purpose of creating a comprehensive inventory of donor-funded land programs. So at the moment, only members of the Global Donor Working Group can contribute program information to the database. But we also see tremendous potential in linking the information in the donor database with other global and regional data sets being developed in land and resource governance, such as the Africa Union's Land Policy Initiative, the International Food Policy Research Institute's mapping of land concessions, and another example is the First Peoples Indigenous Rights Risk Report, to just name a few. If we overlay the global donor database with these other data sets, we can develop a more robust picture of where programs, issues, and potential hotspots are located, as well as opportunities to align programs and investments to improve efficiency and priorities. The map incorporates specific information on how each donor project supports the voluntary guidelines. Please explain how this tool supports the success of the voluntary guidelines at some point. The unanimous endorsement of the voluntary guidelines by 96 member countries of the Committee on World Food Security, a broad and inclusive consultative process which ended in 2012, was a major achievement that required tremendous effort by a wide range of stakeholders. But delivering on the promise of the voluntary guidelines is an even greater challenge for all of us, not just FAO. Delivering on this ambitious agenda will require coordination uh, coordinated action by development agencies, civil society organizations, governments, and the private sector. The Global Donor Database, which includes information on how each land governance project addresses specific aspects of the voluntary guidelines, provides a, a platform, if you will, for information sharing and coordination that can help stakeholders improve the effectiveness of the guidelines. There have been mapping exercises in the past, we all know. They all started well. But when it came to the time, they were not maintained. They were outdated quite often. So how will this database be kept up to date and maintained after the launch for this not to happen? 
Exactly. We hope at this time it will be different. As you know, the database is hosted by your organization, the Global Donor Platform. And we are very grateful for the time and energy you have invested in working uh, with us in making this initiative a reality and for your ongoing efforts to host and maintain the database and maps. But ultimately, as you say, you know, the database is only as good as the information it contains. Each member of the Global Donor Working Group is responsible for managing and updating their own program information. The success of this initiative depends on members' collective efforts to keep the information accurate and up-to-date. To facilitate this, though, we developed a, the database as a decentralized system, right? so that each donor enters and manages their own program information directly. Uh, to start, members of the working group have committed to update their program information at least twice a year. But I, I would just like to add, because the database is decentralized, what that means is that you may have nine-tenths of the members updating information, and maybe one member is a bit slow to do that. The database will still be very useful. Greg, you were one of the people pushing for the creation of the Global Donor Working Group on Land in 2013, and it was even mentioned now in the UK G8 Presidency uh, Report. Um, why were you advocating so strongly for this group, and where's the benefit of this group, especially in connection with the Global Donor Platform? As chair of the negotiations for the voluntary guidelines, I take great pride in the importance of this global accomplishment. We believe the voluntary guidelines are a technical and political tool that can help producers, both large and small, to improve agricultural productivity and food security, expand economic growth, and help lift millions of people out of poverty. But we also know that the voluntary guidelines themselves are not enough. If we want to achieve our goals of broad-based economic and sustainable growth, we must do more. We must redouble our efforts to fund programs that strengthen land and resource governance, particularly for men and women. We have to help the private sector to better understand the risks and limitations of working in environments where there are weak land tenure systems. And we must work with responsible private sector companies to address these limitations and develop practical solutions that promote investment and respect property rights. The Global Donor Working Group can be an important voice for changing the way in which we conceptualize the role of property rights in achieving these and other important development um, objectives. Let me close with an example about women's property rights and economic empowerment. Women produce 43% of the food in developing countries, but own less than 10% of the land. In countries like Ethiopia, closing the gender gap in agriculture would increase average crop yields 20-30% to 30 on women's land. For this reason, the United States was extremely pleased to enter into a partnership with the governments of Ethiopia, the UK, Germany, and Germany to improve land governance and enhance food security. This partnership, which grew out of the coordinated efforts of the Global Donor Working Group, will foster greater collaboration between Ethiopia and its development partners to support the voluntary guidelines and implement programs that improve tenure security and economic empowerment for men and especially women. We believe this program is a model for this type of multi-stakeholder partnership for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.